Hey, it's Jessica Namasa with WTF Health. Joining me right now, I have Dr. Frank Ong. He is the Chief Medical and Scientific Officer for Everlywell. So, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me here. Okay, so I chose to find Everlywell at this massive conference that we're at with the health conference because I actually saw a commercial for an Everlywell testing kit. And so for those who are not familiar with Everlywell, you guys basically, you can introduce it, the concept for us, but this is basically like you order the lab tests for whatever kind of medical question that you might have. Do I have an STI? Do I have a metabolism disorder? What foods and vegetables should I not be eating? So tell, tell everybody, I guess, introduce Everlywell um, and, and tell, you, tell them what you do. So we're a digital health platform that connects the consumer with laboratory testing. We do over 30 different types of tests across different therapeutic areas, such as cardiovascular tests like lipid and cholesterol, diabetes, HbA1c, STIs, as you mentioned, and then hormones, uh, women's health, men's health, food sensitivity is a popular one as well. Yeah, I mean, these are packaged and like they're very consumer friendly and so you can kind of find what it is that you're looking for. So. Talk me through this process because I think that this is really interesting and I think one of the critiques I can you know, hear in my head is, oh my God, we shouldn't have patients ordering their own lab tests and you're a doctor, what do you think? Good idea, bad idea? <laughs> so as a physician, um, as a family physician, I actually think it's a great idea um, as long as the tests are done in the quality lab, the same quality labs that physicians you know, order their tests from. And so you know, what the patient does is, or a consumer in this case, uh, goes online, Amazon, our portal, goes to CVS, Kroger, Target, and they can pick from all these different types of tests. Um, and then what they do, they collect their samples at home, whether through a finger prick, simple, easy, uh, urine samples sometimes, or saliva samples, depending on the test. They register the kit, send the sample into the lab. What happens then is the third-party physician network approves of the requisition before the tests are actually uh, uh, processed. And the same physician and the, inside that physician group actually reviews the test results before they are sent out uh, to the consumers. So after the consumer receives the results, they can view it on the online platform. And what they can do then is uh, have a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one session with our medical affairs department, which composes of registered dietitians for the food sensitivity tests, uh, registered nurses, nurse practitioners, who will go over the results with you and uh, suggest actionable next steps. That's really cool. So there is oversight throughout the whole process. I guess my one question would be when, when a consumer or a patient is picking, how do they know what to pick? Well, so we do have um, a discovery tool on the website um, and there are educational pieces, hopefully that we've done a good job at, where we try to educate the um, consumers in terms of what to do now after they get the test results, we also suggest other tests that might fit you know, for them. And as we evolve and as we uh, inform from the data that we're uh, looking at, we could potentially be uh, personalizing or tailoring um, the additional tests that are um, based on the results of the customer. Okay, so so if I'm hearing you say this correctly, so it's like if I take a test and it shows that maybe there's there's something missing in one of the, the reports as far as like maybe a level is low or too high, you might suggest other tests that I would want to take to kind of see if I have a different kind of condition. Is that right? Yeah, so some of the tests are single marker tests and mm -hmm. some of the tests or kits are multi-marker. So, um, Perhaps you only started with a simple test with one marker, let's say HbA1c for diabetes. You might have comorbidities with heart conditions, and so we have a heart health test, cholesterol and lipids test. Sometimes, as you know, with these chronic conditions, uh, a patient or a customer is not just one condition that affects them. It could be multiple. Another way to think about it is, let's say you're a diabetic. You are on uh, a, a therapy, you know, going long term, you just need to get checked every three months for your HbA1c to make sure that your therapy is still um, adequate. So this is another case where we would uh, remind you every three months that, hey, it's time for you to get your HbA1c tested. And so it you know, makes it convenient. Um, again, this is an at-home collection, so you don't have to go make an appointment and go you know, get a venipuncture draw, which is, to me, more painful than a finger prick. Yeah. Yeah. And also you said, I mean, all the pricing for these is on the website. Like it is a kit, it is at one price. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's no surprises when it exactly. comes back when the 
the statement comes back from the lab about how much it costs. Exactly. It's on the boxes. If you buy at a brick and mortar store yeah. like Target or CVS, the $39 for a single marker STI, that's all you're going to pay. Okay. Um, and if it's positive result, especially for a diagnostic test at the STI, then our third party physician network reaches out and offers to give you a prescription to get treated for it if that is the consumer's uh, wish. And so you had mentioned this one, the STI test is diagnostic, but there are, it's a mix. So some of your tests, you, you have 30, you said total right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of them are diagnostic and some of them are not. So the ones that are not, what, what kinds of tests are those? Yeah. So we can think about the nutrition uh, category. So we have uh, the B vitamins, that's B6, mm -hmm. 9, and 12. So if you're interested in knowing if you're deficient or if you're toxic, if you're taking too much vitamins, for example, you might want to know. Uh, vitamin D is another popular one. Um, food sensitivity, uh, 96 different markers, um, different types of foods that you might be sensitive to. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing is that, for example, the food sensitivity test, you might have symptoms, let's say joint pain, uh, uh, gut problems that you might not exactly know what the cause is and you might want to take this test to see if there might be some foods that you could eliminate um, because based on the reactivity that we see we can say you are sensitive to that test. Okay right? so it's kind of like a it's a it's a middle step almost before you actually go and, and have to see a physician in a doctor's office visit there's some things that you can do as an empowered you know patient or an empowered um, healthcare consumer i hate that term but you know you can kind of take a little bit of control over what's going on with you and kind of get some some groundwork done before you go into the doctor's office right and i think even more so than that so i mentioned cholesterol and lipids previously so if you were someone that you know was worried about your cholesterol and lipids you, know, you might want to know that on a regular basis or even as you say before you go see the physician to be more educated and informed and uh, I think that is a trend that we're seeing especially with the Millennials uh, with the tech savvy folks um, that you want to have more information and it's actually a mission where I think information about yourself is actually you know, your right to know that. Um, I think also from the physician's perspective I go back to the story of being a family physician um, I thought that there was a lot of wasted time and inefficiency in the system because what happened was that you had to order the test when they came to see you first and then they went somewhere to get the testing and then they had to come back after two weeks and then, right. then you can you know, recommend like a treatment plan. So it almost seems like it would have been much simpler if a patient could come to me with the set of labs that I could actually look at. I could probably order additional tests if I needed to. Yeah, I was going to say right. some labs are sometimes probably more helpful than no labs at all. Exactly. It's a informed or partially informed decision mm -hmm. that I think is helpful for the patients and the customers to know as well as for the physicians as well. Tell us what you can about the business of Everly Well. So you guys just closed a big fundraising round. How much was that? It was a nice it was a nice number. 50 million. 50 million. That's crazy. Um, just a few months ago. And then how are you growing? Can you give us a sense of your customer base and plans for scaling? Right, so I think this year we're going to hit uh, 350,000 tests. Next year we're going to shoot for about two and a half to three times more. Wow. Um, or we're looking at uh, very uh, ambitious goals for next year, and uh, it's we are going to you know put all those funds to use in order to grow the business. Yeah, your targeted marketing worked on me totally. I was like, <laughs> I saw the commercial for this. I'm like, no way! They just raised a ton of money. I'm like, well, how is this on TV already? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. totally worked for me. It's I'm like probably in the profile, the, the demographic right. profile that totally worked for right. you. Um, yeah. Multi-channel approach, mm -hmm. uh, social media, yeah. online, and now TV. I think it's great that it's creating more awareness for this space and then do you have any plans can you give us any sneak previews of what other um, tests might be launched in the future well so um, we're looking at you know what we're still missing if you were to go to a physician for your physical let's say um, you know we do have uh, many tests but there are for example joint health tests kidney health tests that's not currently offered that we're looking at from the uh, consumer perspective, um, for example, food sensitivity. So we're thinking about environmental sensitivity or allergies, things like that, that are actually very complementary and actually very useful and helpful um, for the consumers to know about. Awesome, well, really exciting. Best of luck to you as you scale. One to watch here, Everly Well. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. Thanks for joining us.